This week we are going to be covering CSS. Uh, we will be going through uh, the commands that you are going to use most often. They form a foundation for CSS that you can use in pretty much any HTML tag. Um, later on in the course, I believe lesson nine, we get into CSS3, which is more advanced where we cover animation and that type of thing. So you're gonna start by reading the pages in the book, and then you're gonna go through the lecture demo. Uh, the lecture demo includes a lot of information. So uh, we kind of begin by breaking down um, some terminology that is used in CSS. And then we talk about the different ways to add CSS to a page. And then I also have examples and interactive links for you. And then once we get done discussing the different ways you put it on the page, we talk about color. And uh, how do we change color? Uh, in CSS. And there's three different ways you can do it. You can use color names, RGB values, and hacks. Those are the three primary ways. There are some additional ways that you'll be learning when we do uh, CSS3, uh, but these are the three major ways that most people change color. And I have a couple links here to color names and, and also to hex values. I've got some sample CSS, so you can kind of see what that looks like. And then we talk about how to change the background color. So this is the background color of any element. So you can change the background of the page itself, of the H1 tag, of a paragraph, of literally anything. So when you're working with colors, it is helpful to understand a little bit about color theory uh, so that your colors work together and the website looks good. So color and images are kind of big as far as uh, putting together a site that looks decent. So um, I have examples of good sites. I have examples of poor sites and the poor sites quite often uh, do not utilize the color or graphics the way they should. Uh, we go through basic color theory. Just so you have a little understanding of color and how to choose harmonious color, how to choose colors that look good together. Uh, and then for those of you that are curious, uh, we go through how hexadecimal colors work. What do all of those wacky letters and numbers mean? Now, to make your lives easier, there are several very good websites that you can go to that will help you pick color. Uh, I kind of like the Adobe site. And you can see, you can pick over here what kind of a scheme you want. And you can kind of adjust the starting color, which is the one in the center here. And then it's giving you options. And you, you can also kind of drag the sliders. And it's giving you RGB and hex values for that. But all of these sites are very good. Uh, another thing you can do uh, to determine colors is if you like a photo, like a landscape photo, you can actually upload that to Lunapic and generate a color palette. And that will quite often give you colors that look very good together. Uh, color does affect mood. So um, that is something to keep in mind when you are designing sites. So I do have a, a little infographic on that here. And then we go back to CSS. So we get into how to do background. So you can do background color, but you can also do background images. 
And if you're going to do background images, there are quite a few uh, CSS commands that you are going to want to use. And this kind of lists them out. And then we get into how to change fonts. Uh, what are web safe fonts? How to use Google fonts, which are pretty awesome because that opens up uh, a lot of fonts for you that uh, you would not be able to use otherwise. And Google fonts are nice, uh, not only because there's a wide variety, but they're online. So if you put them in your page, uh, then anybody viewing your page is going to be able to see them. And then we've got quite a few uh, CSS properties that deal with font. Uh, the size, the weight, which is like bold facing or not bold faced. Uh, the style, which is italics or normal typically. Uh, transform, which is upper and lower case. The only CSS3 that I brought in as far as text goes is text shadow, just because that's a super cool effect that people like. And you can see text decoration is basically underlining, but there's a lot of different ways you can underline. So as you go through here, there are tons of links to the interactive examples. And I highly encourage you guys go play with that because just reading this is not going to make you remember it. You actually have to work with it. So by the time you are done going through all of this, the CSS that is covered is the CSS that you will be using 90% of the time. And we will be using it for the rest of the semester. So to give you practice, we have the textbook assignment. And the textbook assignment uh, is directive. So there are videos that go with all the tasks. There will be folders that you need to create, and then you will be downloading the files to those folders. You'll also be downloading graphics to your media folder. And then you will be basically editing those files and adding CSS. So you're gonna be doing external sheets, internal sheets, and inline styles. So you're gonna learn all three ways of applying CSS to your page. Okay, so this basically walks you through everything that you need to do. You guys are gonna learn the parallax effect, which is really cool. Uh, things will scroll over the top of a background image. And I know you guys have all seen that before. So when you are done at the bottom, this is a summary of everything you need to turn in and how many points did this work. Then you're gonna work on the lab assignment. So the lab assignment, uh, you will be doing an internal style sheet on the details and summary page that you created last week. So you'll be adding styling to that page. So you need to decide on a complementary color scheme for your page. And then the styling that you need um, for a heading. So whatever heading you're using in your page, whether it be heading one, heading two, heading three, you need to style a heading and change the font and the font size and the padding, uh, the color or the background color and the weight. And then for the body, these are the changes you need to make, et cetera. So this is just telling you what you need to change. And here's an example of what it'll look like. Uh, then for your assignment page, you need to add a lesson four and the links to your pages. And for the lab assignments, you'll need a link to that detail summary page. Also, also in your assignment page, you are gonna create an external style sheet and link it into the assignment page. And your external sheet is going to have styling for the body. You're gonna do a font family and a size. You are going to have link styling for all four states and heading one, two, and three styling. 
And so here is an example of what I did. And I think I did a little extra because I did some section styling and paragraph styling as well as the styling that was required. And then this is an example of what it looked like. Also in your assignment page, make sure uh, that you do an inline style in the footer, which is the section down here. Once you're done, you're gonna transfer all of your pages and then you are going to enter done in both of the drop boxes. Uh, after you're done with the assignment, you are going to do the discussion forum. And as I mentioned, there are, there's CSS is huge and they're adding to it all the time. Uh, so what we do in this first round is the basic uh, CSS that you're gonna use in the majority of your pages. There are, um, there's animation and transition effects and all sorts of cool stuff that we are gonna be covering in lesson nine. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted you guys to do a little bit of research. Um, so I want you to find a property that you're interested in learning more about. And then um, I want you to do a little research on it, uh, kind of Google it. And once you find a CSS article that is interesting, I want you to post to the discussion, um, post a link to the article or video and explain the purpose of the CSS, how it can be used, and then reply to uh, a couple of your classmates postings. So I actually did an example here for you because this is something that I think is pretty cool. Uh, CSS Tricks is an awesome site. They have a ton of really cool things for CSS. And uh, the one that I found, instead of adding a fill color and a outside stroke color to text, um, you know, doing it this way, you can actually use a newer command called text stroke and text fill color. Now, because they're new, you have to prefix them with WebKit, but they basically do the same thing. And so if you wanted to try this out, I actually put a little web example here that you can copy and paste, but it'll kind of show you the difference. And you can see how much easier this is than the old way. Okay, so anyway, um, you guys are gonna do something similar and you do need to respond to a couple of your classmates. If you wanna reply to mine, that's great. Uh, Otherwise, uh, wait for your classmates to post and you can reply to them. If you run into any problems this week, uh, please let me know. Make sure you have your pages transferred to the web so I can look at them. The main problem that students have is that the file and folder names are case sensitive. So keep that in mind, upper and lower case are different uh, when they're on the web, but they are very literal. So if you have typed something in with an uppercase letter, um, but you don't use that uppercase letter in your CSS external link, it's not gonna find it. So make sure you match the upper and lower case and you shouldn't really run into too many problems. Um, have a great week and let me know if you have any questions.